Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and welcome to my new video series about the evolution of my favorite animals, the elephants. In this episode, we'll be discussing what makes an elephant, their living and extinct relatives, and exactly where on the tree of life they are, with some history spliced in. So to start, what is an elephant? Well, there are three species of these long-nosed, large-eared, gray-skinned, big beauties alive today within two genera. The Asian elephant in the Elephas genus, found in the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia, and the two African elephant species, the African bush and forest elephants, in the Loxodonta genus. Did you know that the smaller forest elephant wasn't scientifically described until the 1990s? Quite recent for megafauna. The word is a big place after all, and it's not surprising that many big animals have gone unnoticed. While these massive beasts may at first glance most closely resemble the other two largest mammals, the rhinos and hippos, in fact, early taxonomists grouped these three groups in the now outdated order called Pachydermata, which is now known to be polyphyletic and thus is no longer regarded as true. The hippos are more related to whales, while the rhinos are more related to horses. The relatives of the elephants, however, are in fact even more strange. To understand this, we must go back to the overall group of placental mammals. Within this group, there are three clades. They are Xenarthia, Boroeutheria, and Afrotheria, the last of which is where elephants and their living relatives are classified in. And boy howdy, the living ones are weird indeed. There's the extremely basal elephant shrews, which are small, adorable little creatures that are believed to closely resemble what the first Afrotheria is thought to have looked like. Otter is a singular aardvark which eats termites in the African plains. Also, there's the otter shrews, tenrix, and golden moles. Of course, these are not actually shrews, otters, or moles, and rather similarly looking animals that have evolved their appearance due to a phenomenon called convergent evolution, which is when different lines of animals develop similar appearances due to sharing similar niches. An even more spectacular case of a convergent evolution can be found in the obscure group called Tomolids, which were wolf-sized predators that stalked northern and eastern Africa from the late Eocene to the Miocene. First thought to have been primates, these mysterious creatures are little known, but are thought to have been predators or mollusk eaters. Unfortunately, they are now extinct. All the creatures I've discussed up to this point are in the first order of Afrotheria, arguably the more basal, being the Afro-insectophilia, the African insectivores. These lace-derived organisms are one half of the Afrotheria order. Now let's go over to the other half of the Afrotheria. Superorder Painug ungulata, which means almost having hooves. This is the category that includes elephants and their closest relatives. Like last time, let's start with the basal most members and go forwards. Hyraxes may look like the other even more basal Afroinsectophilia, as well as the rabbits, but they're actually related to the elephants. Don't believe me? Look at their incisors. If you see them, they kind of look like tusks of elephants, don't they? 
Other more obscure similarities are that both groups have flattened nails and a pair of teats found in the armpits. Sounds very sweaty and disgusting. Hyraxes, much like elephants, used to be far more diverse, with extinct species ranging in size from a, a, a large rhino to that of a small mouse. Of course, most of the larger ones went extinct, leaving the smaller ones to live in the trees, bushes, and rocks. Some of the larger hyracoids, however, took a better route. You see, hyracoids, which, just so we're clear, hyracoids basically refers to primitive things that aren't quite modern hyraxes, but they're still considered part of the family. Due to competition from highly advanced ungulates, a bunch of hyracoids took to life in the watery shores of the ancient Tethys Ocean. These form the clan called Tethytheria, two of which are still alive today. Elephants, obviously, but also the manatees. Primitive sirens. Oh yeah, did you know that manatees inspired the siren myth? I guess they were just really horny and drunk when they saw these things because they really don't look like people, man. Anyway, back then, manatees had legs and looked a lot like hippos. There's essentially a complete evolutionary sequence for this order. The other two groups that are closely related to elephants are completely extinct. Embrithopodas were a group of animals that started small in the rabbit-sized Radinischia before climaxing into the massive rhino-like beast Arsenotherium in the Oligocene. These creatures were massive, and they probably went extinct due to climate change, which destroyed the rainforests they depended upon. See, climate change is a killer, today and in the past. The more you know. Anyway, the other fellow clad is Desmophilia. Now, this is a controversial addition. I wanted to put it in here because it is considered, but some arguments have been placed forward that the clade is actually a true ungulate. But as I feel that's still kind of controversial, I feel they're worth mentioning anyway because I probably won't talk about them again in this series. They were an odd group with forward-facing canines and incisors and lived like manatees. Ironically, you probably think manatees look stupid, but these creatures were so pathetic that they went extinct because of manatees. Man, you gotta really be weak to lose out to those guys, am I right? That brings us to the order that the rest of the series will be covering. Proboscidea, from the Latin word for proboscis, for obvious reasons I hope I don't have to explain. The very first of the elephants might look like another group I discussed earlier. But we'll talk about that more next time in the series. So remember to subscribe for that. That's it. I'm the Dark Master. I'll see you next time. Consider subscribing if you are interested. Also, check out my bit shoot.